Hey everyone, today's lesson we're going to talk about using Armitage, which is a GUI front end for the MSF console, which we learned how to use in the last video lesson. And uh, really, like I said, it's very basic in nature. It does almost the same exact functions as MSF console. It does, however, have some additional bells and whistles, albeit nothing to write home about, uh, that maybe will make your life a little bit easier. Again, it's really up to your preference whether you want to use the GUI version here of Armitage or if you're diehard like me and you want to use Terminal, which is MSF console. And like I said, I'll teach you how to use both. And so um, when you go to use Armitage through every single time, you have to start services just like we had to do in MSF console. Now that said, uh, the very first service, and you're probably going to be familiar with this, is you have to do the sudo command, of course, and service Postgres SQL start. It uses the Postgres SQL database. Enter in your sudoers password. And that is that. Now here's the thing. So as a sudoer account, you could technically go right over here to Armitage and double click on or single click on it and it'll start up the GUI. However, the caveat to that is, is that uh, you will not have certain functions inside of that. Now, Again, to kick off an nmap scan with, say, OS detection, like we learned in the uh, nmap video, uh, you need to be root or have root privileges. So the thing that I suggest everybody does always is start Armitage from the terminal and start it with the sudo command. So simply sudo Armitage and hit enter. Now, you're going to be presented with a dialog box here in just a second, and it's going to tell you that it's connecting to a database of sorts, and that's why we had to start the Postgres SQL database. And simply here, you can leave all of these fields alone. Go ahead and click Connect. And it's going to say a Metasploit RPC server is not running or not accepting connections yet. Would you like to start it? Just hit Yes. And you can see here, it's going to go ahead and scroll some stuff across the screen here. And you have a dialog box here where it says it is connecting. So just give it a minute or so. Again, depends on your speed of your machine and your hardware and stuff like that. Um, but I think this is going to fire up here in just a minute. And I'll show you around the GUI interface here quickly once it does start up and get you a little familiar with what that looks like. And then we'll go on to actually start using it. Okay, so you can see here that it uh, still takes a second here to get everything going. Uh, looks like it is loaded now. So this is kind of slow. And again, it's going to vary based upon your hardware speeds. Um, you know, that I, I think it's written in JavaScript or something, or Java itself. I'm not too sure. I, I can't remember. Um, but bear in mind, it is going to be a little slow sometimes when it's actually performing um, actions. Whereas in MSF console, I mean, it was pretty fast um, for the most part. Okay, so that said, let's take a look at the GUI here. So you have a couple of different areas. This area here where the mouse is in, uh, where I just highlighted the blue box here, this is where all your targets are going to show up. And it's that's one of my favorite parts about this is you actually get to visualize it. I'm, I'm more of a visual person. Um, so I get to visualize my targets where they are and you know, how they're interacting and stuff like that. So um, th for me, that's a bonus to using Armitage. Now also, guys, just a caveat here, keep in mind, these tools here, Armitage and MSF Console, you know, Metasploit and all that stuff, they're all good free tools to get you going to start making money as a pen tester. Um, however, there are commercially available tools. And those tools such as Nexpose and Nex um, Nessus and even Metasploit has their own you know, Rapid7 uh, has their own interface for Metasploit and things like that. Uh, there's a ton of other commercial scanners out there, but that is far beyond the scope of beginner's course. We're just trying to get you going here to start generating some revenue. And then, of course, uh, I'm going to try to work out some deals with some of those companies so I can give our members, people that subscribe to the monthly membership, uh, access to those discounts on those softwares. Uh, the menu to the left here. Now, this is like where all of your auxiliary modules live. Um, your actual exploits, and they do a pretty good job here of breaking it down by directory. So if you remember correctly, uh, when we did a search for the VSFTPD uh, 2.3.4 backdoor vulnerability or exploit, we did our search function and it told us a directory path to where that exploit actually lives. 
this is kind of the same idea, but it's just visualized, of course, because it's a GUI. So that being said there, uh, you can use this search box underneath here. Uh, this is your console down here. Now, this is just a representation of all the commands that would actually be issued inside of MSF console. Again, this is just a GUI front end for MSF console. Uh, going to the menu here on the top, uh, of course, you have the menu that says Armitage here, and you can set some preferences and uh, Sox Proxy, which I really couldn't get to work very well the last time I used this. Um, you have your view setting modes. Um, you can view your loot, much the same as typing in loot inside of MSF console. Uh, jobs, same thing. Reporting, you can kind of export data, but I didn't really try to run a report on the newest version of Armitage yet, so I could not tell you if it's any good or not. Uh, maybe we will try that at the end of the video here if we have some time. Host. Now this is a menu here where you can import hosts. And by import hosts, I mean like a list of hosts and or Nmap scan results. So if you remember correctly during this series, we have actually gone through and run our own independent Nmap scans and uh, OpenVos scans, things like that. So this is where we could import that. And I'll show that to you here in just a minute. Um, you can manually add hosts if you wanted to. You click on that brings up a dialog box here and you just start typing in hosts if you wanted to and then you hit add uh, of course we're not going to actually do that here uh, going back to the host menu here you can do your nmap scans from here now keep in mind these are canned scans and what that means is that they're predetermined on what they can do so uh, if they don't hit a specific mark on what you're looking for say firewall evasion or ids ips evasion things like that um, then you're kind of out of luck. So what I would suggest doing is, like I've already taught you, is to actually run your own independent scans with Nmap, with OpenVos, and then take your scans and import them into uh, tools like this. Um, so you can see here is a bunch of different scans. You could do ping scan. Again, the quick scan OS detect will not work unless you start arm Armitage under root and or a sudoers account. Now you have some MSF scans here, which are particular to MSF console. You have DNS enumerate and clear database. You have under your attacks a menu. This is after you find your host, you'd have find attacks and a Hail Mary attack, which the Hail Mary attack is very noisy. It actually does a lot of destruction. So it's kind of like it throws pretty much everything at the target. And there's a good chance you're going to break your target. So try to stay away from that, even though I know it's as tempting as ever. Workspaces. So this was one of the things we discussed in MSF console as well. And in there, uh, we were able to actually create a workspace to try to stay organized. And you can do that here as well. And to start off any scan in here, we are actually going to go ahead and click manage. And it brings up now you can see down here it brings up another tab. So we had console, and now we have workspaces. And every time you actually do something in here, it's going to create another tab here. So that's one of the things that I hate about this because it does tend to slow it down um, is that you can have, you know, much like a browser, 50 tabs open here and it just gets confusing and it just loads it up and, and weighs it down. Uh, so when you're done with a particular task, I just recommend to go ahead and close that tab out. So again, we don't get confused or we don't lag. So workspaces, let's go ahead and click add here on the bottom and Again, we're just going to make this Acme Inc. And you could put specific hosts here and ports and OS and things like that if you knew about uh, this target already. But we're actually just going to do this as if we don't know anything about this target just, just yet. So let's go ahead and click Add. And you can remove from here these and you can activate, which is basically you're changing into that workspace. So if you went back to um, input here, whoops, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong menu here. <laughs> if you went back to your workspaces, you can now see that Acme Inc. is selected, of course, by the asterisks. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out the workspaces tab. Now you can delete workspaces from there again, like I said. Let's see here the help menu. I mean, if you really needed it, you could go ahead and check this out. You can go to Raphael's homepage, which is a guy that uh, created Armitage. He also created Cobalt Strike, which is a commercially available tool, just like Armitage, but it has a lot more functionality. Uh, and things like that. So I'll try to work on getting a deal for the uh, members of the Pentester University site as well for that. And that would be in your members, special members area, uh, where you guys have all your other information there that is not privy to anybody but members. Okay, so I want to show you how to just import your Nmap scans, because like I said, you know, with, with using Nmap that's built into um, you know, MSF console or Armitage or anything for that matter. Uh, they are canned 
um, you know, testing. And they're they're not really like you can't really modify them. So that that to me as a pen tester doing this for many years bothers me. So uh, again, it's very important to run your own set of you know scans like Nmap and OpenBoss things like that. So simply go to import host. Now keep in mind here, we were running as sudo, right? So it automatically drops us into roots home directory. So if you clicked on desktop, you see nothing. So you have to actually go back here to the slash the top level directory and go to home and then choose your username, then go over to desktop. And if you remember correctly, this is where we started keeping our, you know, scan results in our organized fashion here. Uh, in our directory structure and this is where it comes into handy right so like if you have this scan saved somewhere else I mean you're gonna have to spend time or just really remember where you had your scan results so that's why the organizational you know comes into, into play here and it saves you a lot of time and uh, really in pen testing time is money so uh, that said go ahead and go on down to what have been in our recon folder here and we had our nmap XML file and then we can just go ahead and click open on that and you can see it just imported it here for us now. And you actually see that it did all the work for us, right? Because we took all the results from the Nmap scan, which was OS detect and the ports and all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, it was saved into the report and now we imported it. We don't have to waste any more time doing it over or potentially missing something using the canned Nmap scans that are available with uh, MSF console and Armitage. So you can see it's already populated here, our Linux machine. And if we right-clicked on this now, uh, we can go click on services. And you can see here, these are all the open ports and the service versions are already done for us. Everything is in good shape. And certainly you can copy this and or refresh this with your buttons here on the bottom. Uh, now again, like I said, so the import tab here, we're done with that. We don't need it anymore. Close it out. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do here is go ahead and see if we can use the search box here. And as soon as you start typing like VSFTPD, because we saw that, of course, uh, that's the version running here on the port 21. Once you started typing search uh, in the search box here, VSF, it automatically brought you down to let me just move this screen over here a little bit. Uh, brought you over to that specific exploit. Now you can click on this and go to relevant targets if you wanted to. And it's going to create some dynamic workspaces. I don't really like to do it this way. What I do like to do if I'm going to use Armitage, which I, I barely ever, uh, is I like to actually click on the target itself. Make sure it's highlighted here with the green box. And then I like to go to attacks and find attacks. Now, the only thing that I do not like about the find attacks, okay, is that it will find vulnerabilities for the port number, not specifically for the service VSFTPD, in our case 2.3.4. And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. It literally goes ahead and queries all the different uh, things for these ports to try to find out what's um, available for it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but unless you really know what it is already I mean you're kind of wasting time doing that here so in that case um, you know like in MSF console we wasted no time we knew that there was a vulnerable version of VS FTPD 2.3.4 we did search we chose that exploit we used it and we set it up and it was like a quick thing and, and we were exploiting the target so uh, that said look at the message box that pops up here and it says attack analysis complete you will now see an attack menu attached to each host in a target's window, happy hunting. Now this is a cool feature. So if you click close on that or okay, and you right click back on your target, you now see this attack menu. And what I was saying about it just guesses based on port numbering, you can see here that we have everything that's available for any kind of FTPD server. So in our case here, pro FTPD, pro FTP, pro FTP, we don't have pro FTP and we certainly don't have pure FTP. We have VSFTP, but we don't have WUFTPD. I've never really heard of that, but um, we do have the VSFTPD. Now, the other thing here is, remember when we did the check function on the exploits, um, and I told you that it was, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. It's really up to each exploit um, programmer, I guess you could say, uh, to properly make the check function happen or not happen. So, that being said, you can click here, and it'll check 
all of these exploits against a target. Now, the downside caveat to that is that, again, you can load up your target or do some damage potentially to the target or create a session lock. It's like you don't really want to do that. Unfortunately, there's no real way here to run a check like we would on each individual exploit. It's kind of like you choose it and you, 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 know, you fire it. That said, uh, we know that we're using VSFTPD version 2.3.4, right? Because we did our homework. We built a case against our client. So if we were to simply click on this one, it's going to bring up a dialog box here. And just like when we did the info uh, to show info about that specific exploit or module, uh, you can go ahead and read about it. This module exploits a malicious backdoor, blah, 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 blah. We've already went through that. Uh, certainly helpful to have. Now, these are your uh, what's equivalent to show options in MSF console and these are certainly clickable and you can change these you have to click them a couple of times which does get a little annoying but uh, certainly you can change the values right so um, the local host is us of course and let's see our host you could change that if you wanted to just double clicking and triple clicking on it until it highlights uh, you could change your port as well Target is just set to automatic and this one here you can do show advanced options now Let me see if I can make this box a little bigger uh, Well, there's not really so many advanced options in here uh, We'll we'll get to one or two that will show you some advanced options here. Hopefully So you could you use a reverse connection and it's gonna do a reverse connection back to your host and we spoke about that in the MSF console lesson So let's go ahead and click launch and see what happens now you should see another tab pop up here in just a moment. There it is. See, like I was telling you guys, it's kind of slow, right? So it is, it's saving you time in some areas, but it's really costing you time in other areas. So it's really a trade-off, you know, between MSF console and Armitage itself. Okay, so you can see here that it went ahead and kicked off the exploit, right? And let's see here. To background it, of course, and, and we didn't actually talk about this switch in MSF console is TAC lowercase j, and that's to background the actual job itself. Um, so you can see here it said it found a shell, our UID, of course, and GID, and command shell session opened, one open for, and all the good data that's there. Now, the nifty thing I really like about this, again, being a visual person, uh, even though it doesn't make sense, really, it's kind of contradicting, right, because I like terminals so much, but... Um, it's rare that I actually get excited about GUI stuff, but this I like. So you can see that the icon here for our target actually changed to red with lightning bolts. It just makes it look awesome, I think. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That said, now once you click on this, you can now see you have a different uh, menu item added here, and that's Shell 1. So if you went to Shell 1, now you can interact. You can upload something to this, um, you know, target. Uh, you can do a uh, pass the session. You can do post modules, which is like kind of creating more sessions and or, you know, backdoors, which we're going to get into that. And, and, and guys, just so you know, in the post exploitation, you don't really use backdoors, right? We're professional pen testers. We're not hacking to make sure we can get back in, you know, unfettered access to do more damage or whatever. Um, very, very rare that you'll ever leave yourself a backdoor. So keep that in mind. Um, let's go ahead and interact with this shell. And you can see here it opens yet another tab. And you can see that the machine's actually starting to get a little bit slower here as time progresses with all these tabs. Uh, so important, again, to just keep closing out ones that you don't need. Like right now, I'm probably not going to need services for a while, and I can certainly go ahead and open that back up if I had to. And the exploit tab, I mean, we'll leave that open for now. But here we are. We dropped into a shell, right? So we can interact here, and who am I is a good command. And you are root who is who's all logged into the box and their terminal types. And we can do IF config to show proof of concept. And of course you can see that that is the case. So now, I mean, this is pretty cool, right? So it, like I said, it saves you some time some places, but other times it's a trade-off. I mean, so some things are slower, some things are harder to use. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It, it's completely your call and what you guys want to do. But uh, me, I just like the terminal, but I do like the lightning bolts and the fancy stuff here <laughs> um, life as a pen tester is boring <laughs> so it's the little things that count 
Okay, so when you're done with like, you know, pen testing your client here and you've already compromised a couple of machines and stuff like that, again, like we have discussed before, uh, especially in the uh, MSF console video, is to disconnect your active sessions because you do not want anybody to piggyback in on your connection and uh, mess with your client. So uh, simply go to your shell here and you can go to disconnect there and uh, you can see down here the session was closed in the um, exploit console and that uh, our target changed from the fancy lightning bolts back to just a regular green frame here and if you ever want to delete a target here you could always right click on it there go to host and remove host and uh, once you do that the host will be gone from your machine here uh, eventually <laughs> like I said Armitage is very very slow and that's why uh, aside from it just being a GUI, I, I kind of like to use MSF console. Um, however, on the commercially graded tools, you know, you have some trade-offs as well. I mean, some of the tools are slow, some of them aren't as interactive, some of them aren't as robust, and some of them are really super awesome and advanced. Um, it's really what your personal preference is going to be. Each tool has their upsides and downsides accordingly. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, that's pretty much it for Armitage. So when you want to go ahead and close it out, you can just go ahead and hit the exit button up there and you can see that it'll actually just go ahead and close out down here as well and you can always stop your database of course to prevent that from running and that's pretty much it and that pretty much wraps up Armitage basics um, Again, I can't say this enough. It's really your call and what you want to use. Uh, I suggest using both and see what you're more comfortable with. Um, for me, it's MSF console. For you, it could be Armitage, or for you, it could be nothing. Uh, you could be more comfortable with Nessus and want to go spend $5,000 on a license or whatever. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That wraps it up for here. We're going to go into post-exploitation next, and we're going to talk about some good things in there. Again, we're not really going to talk about leaving backdoors in your client's systems, uh, but we are going to speak about some other things that uh, are in post-exploitation. So I'll see you there.